Hey YouTube, still on battery amps. Been uh, this week. Just first thing uh, for Mr. White Snake. That's what a collar looks like. See, it's kind of like got a. There's nothing in the back. It's kind of like a. It's basically there's a wonder bar. It just happens to be sitting right there. Basically a wonder bar, apart from recessed into the body. A wonder bar sits flush mount, but it's basically exactly the same thing. You can see, like, yeah. So that's the, the collars that we're talking about. You know, keeps saying you don't have a real collar. Yes, your bridge is made by Cara, but it's like a two-point Floyd Rose thing. This is like a stupid... It's kind of like a Bigsby or something, I don't know. I can't I can't bend my head around it. Um, I do have one of these, or I've got a copy of one in one of my wash burns. But this is actually a... This is a, is a flyer or something it's called. Made in the USA, Cara Flyer. So that's when, when I say Cara, I'm thinking of this type of design where you've got like a metal ring. It's also got, it's got a funny... Um, routing hole that's left after it because it doesn't go all the way through so it's like a like a strat you can put like a floyd rose or something in it this kind of you'd have to reroute the whole thing and it's not easy to patch over them um so there we go this is my aria blade runner okay so guitar <laughs> so obviously i'm playing battery amps i'm going to play my most expensive guitar just because it's the one that's sitting there um mm -hmm. i'm assuming it's probably still going to be in tune from when i was playing it yesterday Near enough. Yeah. So here's my the house is so that's been using over at Jen's obviously it's had the, the J Pax treatment. She didn't enjoy doing that, she won't be doing it anymore. It's too fidgety and there wasn't enough room. Uh, so this is the Fly 3 guitar amp. You can see there it's got an input gain, it's got a switchable overdrive, um it's got a master volume, uh EQ, ISF, which if you go in one direction, it's meant to be a British sound. If you go on the other side, it's an American sound. It's kind of like a mid-scoopy type thing. And then it's got delay and delay level on a power socket. The delay is kind of quite useful. One of the things I want to do is I'm going to see how this gets on. But when I bought the wee bass one last week, see, this one says bass on it. It's got different knobs, but it's the same box. It came with an extension cabinet, which is basically just another speaker with a, uh, it looks like an Ethernet cable on the back. So you can connect the two together. And it made a huge difference on the bass amp. It didn't necessarily make it that much louder, but um, it made it sound so much bigger. Uh, it was definitely a worthy addition. Although, to be saying that, it's actually, I'm not, I didn't, I, I didn't, I bought them second hand, didn't pay an awful lot of money for them. I've since looked them up and it's 120 quid for the mini bass amp, that extension speaker and the power lead. I don't have the power lead. To be honest, I was a bit sceptical about it when I bought it because the power lead's quite expensive. It's like 20 quid or something like that. And I was like, eh. But they last for ages on batteries. Maybe different if you're using it as your only amp. I've just used mine occasionally and you know, I'm over at Jen's or at Download or something like that. Um, so, look, I was going to bring in, I'll do, a, I was going to, I'll do another battery video next week. Um, I've got my wee orange one which is what the, the amp I like having in the car just like a, but it's not it's not a real amp but it's this sort of thing you know kind of what's it for I said see if this was your only amp you know if, if you're a beginner or something I think it's I think I think it's good enough um and it's like one of my, my stipulations about having like a sort of wee portable amp like that is if it's for playing in the house it doesn't really matter but if you're going over at your pal's house and you're maybe having a bit of a jam and they've got like an acoustic and there's like you know we practice amps and stuff kicking about as long as it's loud enough to make up with someone who's battered an acoustic um even if that's not at its best sound so we're on it doesn't sound big but I mean, that's a pretty damn usable. I could get away with just using that. I've not got up as loud as well. So it's not even a, uh, it's not a half volume on the clean channel. But it's got enough for me. I'll be using the sort of, you know, the single coily sounds in this. I'm 
using a really expensive guitar just because I figured you might as well give it the best shot. It's going to show up the the, the, the limitations in the, the amp quicker, I think, probably. But I mean, sitting just playing the guitar on my own, like I'm just now, I don't need any more than that. A bit, uh, put a bit of volume up a bit. So I mean, I'm just fine. That's um. I was so impressed by that the first time I ever heard one. I mean, it's even better than any of my amps for playing at this volume. You know, bedroom guitarist, I think, yeah, totally, you pretty much don't need any else. I've got a wee bit of uh, delay on just because I've got the option. Um, The big, the big knob's time. The other one's, uh, the, the, the wee knob is um, intensity. Is that the word it uses? Just delay level. That's a slow one, we got that. trick of putting the delay on and playing the second note when the second when the that, that when the trigger's going. So Quite uh, a lot. So you put it down sort of fast, and kind of it kind of gets sort of reverby. Like it kind of using the delay. I was like, well, what do you put delay on it? So it must be cheaper putting delay than reverb on, but it's kind of using it like the same way I use reverb to sort of make it cheap and sound like it's bigger than it is sort of thing. I mean, I realised that that's what reverb does when I'm playing through like an amp in here. It's like, because I've got a wee room that's all dead. Like, obviously, it's a live room. Well, you know what I mean? Like, sound-wise, there's no flat surfaces or shit. So you don't get any echo and stuff. Whereas if you're playing at a gig, it echoes off the walls and stuff. So you can simulate that with the reverb. But what this is doing is you're just kind of trying to make it sound bigger than it is. I'm still on the one speaker. I've just turned the delay off. I can't remember. One of those ones that see if you've got it on just at the point where you can only just tell it's on. There. You can't hear the delay, but it just makes it sound a little bit bigger. Yep, yeah, so it does have distortion on it as well. Um, turn the delay off. Overdrive channel, so we gain it half. Humbucker. That's the EQ kind of just to the left of centre from. That's the I think that's the American side. As in muffled. Halfway. All the way to the left. A bit 
the magic seems to be right over here. Because me first two years on the guitar, that sound, I did in there. So. So that's like the gain at half, I've got to gain it, gain it full. So it's like... like a lot of these we amps, I've noticed that the cubes like this as well, when you're on the sort of super saturated distortion, it actually kind of works better than it does when you're doing that bit in the middle where you've got, where I like to sit where you've got that sort of, it's distorted if you hit it hard and if you play it a bit cleaner, it's not distorted. It's not as good at riding that. I think that's the tubes that do that. But that's, I mean, for being, look at the size of it. I suppose I'll put up full bung, see what it goes like full bung. So that's full bung. Full bung. Which is well loud enough to play leads over a drunk person playing acoustic. The fact that it even goes up to a point of how how loud does it go clean actually? So there's maximum volume, half gain on clean. You can kind of hear the speaker. It's kind of like see when you play with humbuckers through so clean. It's kind of got that sound where you're just kind of overloading things. But I think in this case you're overloading the speaker, what the speaker can handle. So turn the volume down to half. It, just, it does. It's, it's not making that speaker distortion anymore. Right. Well, let's, let's try the the other sound. I don't know if it'll make any difference to what you hear recorded in that mic. I'm recording it in that mic and kind of try to do it that way rather than showing you what it sounds like when you mic it up. Um, it doesn't seem to make sense to me. So let's just plug something like what looks like a modem cable into the back. And if it does what it does with the bass. See, the bass, the bass it, it, it made it kind of almost at the point of going from being, yeah, kind of all right to being, oh, that actually sounds like a bass amp. I don't know what it's going to sound like. This, this is a straight up just working out. I mean, if I put them further apart. I'm just wondering, I think, what it did with the bass was, I think it's, there's, um, talked about this before with the Black Star ID core. It's got some elect stereo. So it's got some sort of jiggery pokery going on with like a, the effects on it where it kind of forces surround sound on you. Somehow, you can do it with like, you know, just tiny delays on it. I used to have, I've got a, a cinema surround sound receiver thing and I had like the, the full 5.1 setup. And there was a mode to just use virtual surround sound, which was just used to two center speakers. And honestly, I'm sitting there with the full setup, all the speakers listening to, you know, proper 5.1 shit. And if you're able to hear each speaker, then you put on the simulated mode. And it'd be like, oh, it's not working. And then, it, because I would look at the speaker beside me and I could hear it. I could hear that speaker going and I could hear, you know, the proper left and right and I could hear the rears. And when, it's only when you got up close to it, you could put your ear to it, there was no sound coming out of it. It was somehow simulating it by firing out, which I think is what the ID core does. I think this might do, do a similar thing between the two speakers. I think that's why the bass amp does what it does. It's maybe taking the bass frequency and splitting it between the two speakers to make it m bigger than the sum of its parts. It's not just like, you know, playing through two amps at the same time. So, I mean, it might make no difference in the guitar. It's quite nice, it's about 31 quid for that on its own. Um, but if you've already got the amp. So, does it sound better? It doesn't make as much a big, as big a difference as it does in the bass. Yeah, it's definitely got the. There's something phasing between the two speakers to make it sound bigger than it is. It's funny how your eyes tell you where it's coming from. That's what always used to confuse me with the ID core. You're looking at it, and the amp's that size, but you're looking at it, and you can see he, you can see the sound coming from something that size. That kind of looks. The sound's coming from there, and it sounds like a big amp. You know, somewhere between the two. <laughs> I 
also another bonus feature with these things actually when my girl uh, ex, 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 ex Sibbit had one where I got that one because she bought the wrong thing she was using it as a speaker for her laptop because obviously laptop speakers are always shit so if you listen to music you need something and she was using one of those oh, you can get like an extension speaker and because it's got like a an mp3 input thing on the back it's it is actual it's got a stereo input so it can run in stereo so if you're got like a pc or something like that you've got powered monitors sort of um certainly maybe not you know the same as having hi-fi speakers but better than having the shitty speakers you get inside a laptop or the speakers you got inside your these you know tellies you kind of do the sound bar thing um as a sort of bonus feature <laughs> I mean, that sounds um, amazing. Doesn't have a lot of options there. Or what, does the delay have some sort of mad effect on it, maybe? It's a pleasant sound. It's more pleasant with the two speakers. Still, still has a wee bit of the sort of um, the sort of wee box sound to it going on, but it's not up very loud. Game back on again. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay, so it's doing the same as what the bass did. It's somehow splitting the... It's not farting out as early. Not necessarily louder, just more powerful. Bigger. You can tell it's a single coil. And... That would, do, that would do me for an amp. I was, I mean, I was thinking about it just along the lines of, you know, when I was a trucker at one point, I was like thinking having something like that means you can actually sit and practice guitar when you're on your lunch break and stuff like that, and it just sits in the cab. Um, and it, brilliant. Um, and I think a genuine, if you're a beginner, yeah, totally. Just as your amp. I mean, okay, you want, you know, you need an amp for gigging. If you're not actually gigging, and even then, I'm running sort of amps that are kind of on the the slightly smaller side for gigging, but you can so that you can still tame them and and use them in the house, which you can't really do with. Well, okay, you can with most modern ones. You know that the orange thirty watt switches down to seven and a half watts, so I can use that in the house. Um, but you know, if you've got like a Marshall stack or something, yeah, you can sort of use it, but not at the volumes that this is doing just now. It just doesn't work. Um. It might let sound through, but none of the valves are heating up enough to actually colour the sound. You just end up with a pure crap sound. Um. And I have been so impressed with the way when we were doing jams, even when Scott was still with us in the JPAX thing, um, you'd be playing through like. I think I was playing through that Roland at one point, proper bass amp, Jen had a proper guitar amp, and I was playing through that wee thing. And it does have limitations in, in uh, size when you're playing it. Because I mean, I've been jamming along with, you know, Jen's got a 4x10 H&H &H speaker cab thing, and that wee Joyo 30 watt band amp. So you've got a, like a 60s 4x10 speaker cab, and it obviously sounds amazing, and it's, it's a column, <laughs> it's fucking huge. So that is kind of it's, it's on the thin sounding side when you put it right next to it. But that always happens. That happens with guitars as well. I remember making that mistake before one time having a jam up at my last house. I, I can't. I gave the Falcon or something to Gav Hodge, and it was like, 
and the good amp, and I was playing through like a, you know, like a wee ten, and a wee, a, a couple of wee amps, kind of kicking about wee ten watt practice amps for other people to play. And I gave him a fucking my amp, and it was like, but I was playing along with the ten watt. I just ten watt sounds totally fine. I was getting great sounds out of arsing about with it during the day. But as soon as you get somebody who's playing through a really expensive guitar and a really expensive amp, it doesn't sound as good. Um, so, such as how it works. <laughs> I just it's a it's a really pleasant sound. Not hun, not loads and loads um like variable very much. Okay, you've got that ISF switch, but no EQ. But that's because I th I need to dig out my um I've got a Line Six one which I'm now going to sell because I've got the Cube. It's a similar to a Cube sort of idea, and it's got the full EQ and stuff on it. The problem is with the full EQ, it's not necessarily the EQ that's limiting what a wee amp like that can do. You think, oh, I just turn the bass up. It's kind of it's looking at it and going like that, ah, look man, I'm a wee, a wee plastic box this size, the bass is up as loud as that I can make it do, there's no point in making it adjustable, it's just, there's, there's so much bass you can get out of a wee tiny speaker like that, um, that so you're getting, you're getting all of it, whereas the Line 6 has got a bass button, so you turn it up past half, and once you, you turn the bass up, but it's like the speaker just can't deal with it, or the amp can't deal with it, so it just turns into mush, um, and it's, there's a wee bit of that with, you know, having a full EQ, it's not like the EQ on, well, the, the wee Laney, for example, it's got, you know, the full bass mid-high thing. Makes a huge difference, and you, you can go in all directions, and it works. Whereas when you're talking about something like that, you're already really limited by the size of it. So I think what they've given you is the ISF thing is, like, the most useful one knob you could have to get all the sounds, sort of thing. Um, it, does make, it does make a difference. Definitely more trebly and mid boost here. Use that for lead guitar. Like that. Or you go to the other side. Kind of more, got a speaker in front of it, mid, more scooped. Oh, the battery's going. There you go, so that's that's the second set of batteries I've ever put in that amp. <laughs> Running at a full pack, so maybe better to, to, to slow it down a little bit. Better not full pack, that's at a half. Coils. things um and the thing the, the, the only thing i know it, it's a, it's technically it has to be deeper like that it's just that i've got that wee orange one and it just clips onto your amp but also the wee orange one i've got is very similar to the marshall ms whatever it is it's the same amp but in a different container much thinner and not anything like as good as this i just wish it was a bit more carryable again is that the cube kind of doesn't have a handle either i feel it should have a handle this one's not too bad because you can kind of hold it like a brick or i've got big hands so it's all right i mean i think if you had small hands maybe you'd just struggle carrying this thing and it's kind of awkward it's not it's not like a pocketable thing but i mean i get it probably it'll need the depth probably to you know i'd imagine this thing's ported and all that to try and get as much as you can out of you know using wind tunnels and stuff like that they worked out exactly how the best way of the most efficient way of getting sound out of such a wee speaker um but i don't reckon this one the the, the, the guitar one needs the extension cabinet the way the bass one kind of does need the extension cabinet i think um uh, what i'm going to do is i was going to do it in this video but obviously that's not happening now i was thinking of um basically i've got my loop pedal set up, I've got it set up in stereo, so I've got like the bass, I normally use the orange 
amp there and the bass amp. So I've got two sides and a A B switch. So basically I was thinking of just putting this, you know, the lead that's going into the orange into this and then the lead that's going into the bass amp into the bass one and see what a loop jam sounds like just using these, although I would have pedals, which would be interesting. Um, I don't know what these sound like with pedals. To me, having a wee amp like that is not the sort of thing that you, you have that and then a pedal board in front of it. It kind of defeats the purpose. You know, the pedal, as soon as you've got a pedal, you've doubled the size of the amp. I feel that, you know, something like that. I mean, okay, you could always, I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't know. The thing, the thing I would get is like if, if I was getting, I would need a loop pedal. I wouldn't use a stereo one. I don't need that. But I mean, I buy one like that weed Lakato one. They gave me for free and still haven't given me any more stuff. Um, something like that. You would need. Uh, I would need a distortion pedal in front of it, um, or some thing so that I can have clean backing tracks because the clean sounds great. And then some sort of distortion over the top. I just think it's one of those things that, like I was saying there about dealing with the how much bass it can handle. You know, it's like kind of it's pure maxed out to do as much bass as it can without farting is, is one of the design criteria of it. It's the same thing with the the distortion and stuff like that. So you might find that your favourite rap pedal or whatever plugged into a Wii amp like that doesn't respond the way you think it's going to because of the way it's been limited. You know, like it's, it's when you're running through such a small speaker, you've just got to take the... It's got all the best bits, it's amplified them, and then the worst bits, it kind of locks them away. Um... But it still would be nice to have some sort of gain pedal in front of it if it came down to it. Yeah, I could not know. Maybe do that later. But it was def definitely worth having one, especially now that we're a wee bit later on. Because um, I mean, when I first got that, they were still a year old, something like that. Um, actually from China, this one. I, it pure blew me away, and I, 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 I was I used to take this over to folks. I was going like, check this. It was like it was the thing. I remember playing cards one time when I had when I just got my. Um, Photo flame strat, and I was I, I was out quite early, so I was sitting playing my photo flame strat through that, and it totally I was like, it totally sounded like a strat. It's like wow, it's like normally when you're playing through like a wee shitty, any sort of wee practice app, you can't really expect it to 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 noticeably be oh that's definitely a strat, not any other kind of guitar, and it really was doing that, just at you know the sort of volumes were sitting there, um, but loud enough for a drunk sing along if it came down to you just you got to sacrifice the tone a wee bit. Yeah, so, battery amps, um, I suppose it's coming up for the time of year, I don't know, maybe everyone else has got a fascination for them, to be honest, I've kind of always wanted one, I've always wanted a, a Roland Cube, it's kind of expanded everything for me, especially since I've got the bass one, I did have a bit of a problem with um, bass, I basically just go down to that download, and I was using that wee orange amp, which I need to do the, the stages of three wee portable amps, like the wee orange one, or the wee Marshall MS1, or whatever it's called, I used to have the MS2, which is like the same but with two speakers, and it's got a variable distortion. Whereas the smaller one, the MS1 or whatever it is, has just got one speaker and it doesn't have an overdrive dial, it's just got an overdrive switch. Um, that That's the one I've got. Well, mine's a, a Dean Markley though, and it's basically just so you've got like a volume, a tone, and an on off on switch, an on off off on overdrive off switch, like a wee rotary switch. So the, and the overdrive is just pure maxed out, everything pedals to the max thing, but it's what I ended up using for the bass because I figured it sounded better because uh, the the other ones didn't that that's it's not big enough to take the bass. It it, it you know, there's only so far you can get before a bass amp starts to fart out, um especially on a wee one. That one and the, that this one definitely went a lot l louder with the second cabinet without farting out for playing quietly. Sounds more like a bass amp than anything else, but yeah. So sorry if you're getting bored with battery amps. See you later.